Hi everyone, uh, I'm Kirsten Duda and I work at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. And today I'm gonna present to you on two serious games that we've developed um, and incorporated into a course that teach about insecticide resistance and its management and it was aimed at malaria vector control staff. So first I'll go through the rationale, the aims, target audience, um, and then I'll lead you through the, the games themselves, the course, and then give you some information on our evaluation and the results from this evaluation. So in malaria vector control, um, people are well aware that insecticide resistance threatens effective vector control. Uh, this information is known, but that translation into policy does not always occur. Um, and to, so we wanted to develop something that could allow this information to be incorporated more readily. Um, and so people learn best by doing. So we developed these two games as a teaching tool. And we wanted to evaluate the efficacy of serious games within this context as a teaching tool. And we wanted to understand, is there knowledge retention? Um, was there uh, an increase in self-efficacy or confidence? Um, and did people come back to us and tell us whether or not they thought they were effective or ineffective? Uh, as I mentioned previously, the target audience for these games initially were malaria vector control staff in country. Um, and the evaluation was done in four different countries, but I'm currently going to present to you the results uh, from two countries, uh, Zambia and Ethiopia, as the uh, results are still being evaluated for Cameroon and Cote d'Ivoire. So we have these two games that we developed. One was a simple arcade-style video game called Resistance 101. And this uh, uh, focused on the fundamentals of insecticide resistance, so that biology for people to understand. And then the second game was a much uh, larger game called Resistance Sim. And this is a simulation game in which the individual has the ability to work within the context of a fictitious country um, and go through the motions that they would as uh, a part of an insecticide resistance management program. So in Resistance 101, uh, we incorporated three different elements. We had uh, a video first. There are eight different learning levels. And in each of these learning levels, there's a video. And this video teaches a, a short amount of information, two to three minutes. And then that player has to apply that information in a game in which they have a mosquito population that, is, uh, that comes across the screen. And they have to kill those mosquitoes, mosquitoes based upon which resistance mechanisms are present and based on the insecticides that they have available to them. After they've completed this, they also have access to a flashcard that summarizes the information in the videos. The second game is Resistance Sim, uh, a simulation game. And it's a resource management game where the individual has access to speaking with stakeholders. They can perform tests. They can analyze uh, their data. And then they can choose which interventions they want to do uh, in, by actually looking at the, that data and understanding what the health population levels are and what the insecticide resistance levels are. We took these two games and we incorporated them into an insecticide resistance management course that was a, a course that occurred over two and a half days. Um, and this had a series of different questionnaires and tests that were associated with it so we could gain a better understanding of whether or not these games were effective. And so uh, initially, they had a participant characteristics questionnaire, self-efficacy questionnaire, and a learning test. And then they repeated this after the course. Um, and then one month later, we went back and we interviewed everyone in Ethiopia and Zambia who had participated in this course to gain a better <laughs> understanding of whether or not they were using this information um, and in what way. So, First component, self-efficacy. So how confident were people? Um, and what we found were that people was that people were quite confident to start with. <laughs> um, um, but their confidence did actually increase after participating in the course. So these blue dots, those are uh, their scores afterwards. And then the red or the orange ones are their scores prior to participating in the course. Um, just to give you an idea, there were 11 different tasks that they were asked to self-evaluate on. Um, and for example, task one, I am confident that I can identify the data that is needed to make an informed vector control intervention choice. And so they had to rank themselves based on this criteria. 
We then decided to look at this data by quartiles, and to, we compared what the scores were for the lowest scoring quartile to their scores afterwards, and we did that for each of these different four quartiles. And what we saw is that you see an increase, um, or a significant increase, uh, across the first three quartiles, but most um, tellingly in these first two quartiles. So these people who were uh, scoring lowest as far as their confidence goes, prior to participating in the course, they were the ones that were reporting this increase in self-confidence. And we saw similar um, results in relation to the knowledge tests. So all these individuals uh, took a knowledge test pre and post course, and again, these individuals that were scoring lowest initially, they began to see the, uh, the greatest increase in their scores. So we then went back one month later and conducted interviews to determine whether or not people felt this is whether or not people felt this was effective or not. Um, and we were met with a quite a uh, high degree of positivity. Um, people felt that the games were good as learning tools, and particularly within this context. They thought that they were unique, um, and they were able to acquire new information from um, information and understanding of process through the games. They reported changes in their self-efficacy. They reported that they felt more confident in meetings, that they felt that they understood material and that they uh, were able to speak with more confidence in this context. They felt that they uh, had gained knowledge. They learned about tests that they previously hadn't known about. Um, they learned about chemicals that they previously had not known about. And they had a better understanding of the process. So they had an understanding of uh, of what the different components were and what they needed to do, what those steps were. They were able to take decision data that they had collected and make decisions from that data. And they were able to engage with people that they previously wouldn't have engaged with. So when they had a meeting, instead of just inviting random people, they would specifically look at who they wanted to invite to these meetings so that they could uh, make the most of their resources. So, one of the other additional things that came out of this was they felt that they were able to speak with their colleagues and they were able to speak with people in the communities in which they were working and they were able to convey the knowledge that they had gained in this course to the people that they were working with. Um, and one particular example that I quite like um, was this one individual who worked in an insecticide resistance um, or management program and he did IRS. And he um, would receive, he was at the district level, and he would receive information from his higher-ups about what insecticide to spray and when to spray it. And then he would tell his team how they were supposed to spray it, and he would tell the people in these communities that they needed to spray. But after he participated in this course, and he had this base knowledge about how um, insecticide resistance occurs and why that management is important, he was then able to tell his teams why, uh, what the role of insecticide resistance was in relation to their work and why the their work was important and why the quality of that work was important. And likewise, he was then also able to, he and his team were able to explain to household owners why they were there, why they were spraying inside when they raised questions about why are you spraying inside and not outside the house or questions around why are you changing insecticides um, when you only came back, you were here such and such a number of months ago. So he was able to better clarify to people what their role was and why they were doing these actions. So just to wrap up, we had these two games, Resistance 101, Resistance Sim, um, both that were used as a part of a packaged course to teach people about insecticide resistance management um, we did see increases in self-efficacy and knowledge, um, and particularly within the low-scoring participants, and this qualitative results that we have received um, did, in fact, reinforce what we were seeing in relation to these tests. There were numerous people who were involved in this project. Um, this project's been going on for a number of years now, um, and the games themselves were created by EM Studios up in Scotland. Um, 
And uh, the, if you have an interest in learning more about these games, we do have a workshop later on this afternoon that's led by my colleague, Allison Reynolds. Um, and uh, the game, the Resistance 101 game is available on Google Play and on the App Store. Um, and if you have an interest in the Resistance Sim game, please come and seek out either myself or my colleague, Allison. And that's it. Thank you.